And then in team fights, while I think instinctively you'd give the advantage over to Fnatic, the way in which that it's so easy for them to just press R and go with an Ornn and a Leona combo, yeah. because of the long range of Genji's comp, if they play patiently, if they play slow, they should be able to come out on top. You just wait for the ults to go, and then those fights suddenly get a lot easier for you from Genji's perspective. So a lot of patience required from Genji. But I think, again, when you kind of look at how Genji approached the game, it's something that I think is very realistic for a team like this. I mean, just looking at Rulers Ezreal against TSM the other day, like he was very willing to stand back, make sure he was safe, and then aggressively arcane shift, and then go in for the fight, land those mystic shots. We'll see if he can do it again today against Fnatic, who have Change the playbook just a little bit. Getting the Ornn, of course, with Whippo in the top lane gives them a huge amount of teamfight pressure, but it's the first time we have seen Reckless not on Jin at this World Championship. He's gone over to the center. We've seen how powerful that can be in the hands of someone like Jackie Love. And now it's up to Reckless to try and prove that he is of a similar caliber. It's going to be a good one. I think third out. Group C is definitely the most exciting group because of the possibility for upsets. I'm going to say A got really exciting earlier today. It definitely today. did. Uh, but when it comes to tournament expectations, I think everyone looked at Group C and said, you know what, honestly, anyone could get out. And honestly, I was a little surprised that Fnatic was able to, uh, that Fnatic lost to LGD. Yep. Uh, especially when you consider how they played it during the play-ins. But LGD have been ramping up, as we've seen many play-in play ins teams do in the past and they're in a really good position uh, Fnatic sitting at one on one Gen G now at two and zero we already talked about the stakes for this matchup but it really is an important one especially when you think about week two and how Fnatic have such a good history moving into week two of world championships they seem to solve a lot of their issues adapt pivot and come in with a new strategy and as you already mentioned it seems like here on day uh, four they've come in with a new strat focusing a little bit more on the team fight aspect not trying to funnel as much into self-made still he can be a prominent AD carry but giving the other carries a few more tools to carry with reckless on the center the late game potential um, that he does possess and nemesis on Oriana is something that he did also find a lot of success with during the regular the season of the LEC. Okay, I was, um, you might have heard an intake of breath from me there, Vedius, because I looked over to life and I saw Ignite Exhaust. And I was like, what's going on here? But he's running Unsealed Spellbook, he can switch over to the Flash. Those are his base spells, though. So Ignite and Exhaust is what life has taken into the game, and then we'll be looking to switch that over to Flash at some point. Whew. Okay, I like it. Uh, I mean, very rarely do you get to see Rakan's running this kind of a setup, but it is definitely one that is all about aggression. It's going to give you a lot of power pretty much any skirmish that you find yourself in. And it's going to be an exciting one to watch. We'll keep an eye on life, of course. With the amount of mobility that life does have as well, you have to imagine that that's going to be very valuable as already Fnatic oh. going for a very potent oh, all in at level one. Yeah, you get so many stuns off as Hill Assassin. The Leona has so much power. Heal coming out. Life is dead. Burst blood to Fnatic in the bottom lane. Wow, and so they punish the flashless life. So the thing is about this Rakan is when he doesn't have the E available, which he doesn't at level one, you can just run him down. So great awareness from the Fnatic bot lane. They end up punishing massively, and they're going to get off to a good start. Also, awareness that Ruler had taken teleport, so you never had that heal. meant they could just be on the front foot for such a long time, and people do underestimate the amount of Q stuns, Shield of Daybreak stuns, you can get off on Leona. It's a six-second cooldown at every single rank, so if you Q someone at the start of a skirmish, you're going to get another one up for the next part of it. Yeah, definitely are, so that's one of the risks that come with not running a Flash Medic. And the other point that I was going to make is, I think one of the potent things about Rakan is the long-range engage you typically get from a Flash. Something that, having played with you so often, is in the mid lane, you can go from that brush all the way to the center of the lane with a Flash W into ult, which guarantees that charm into Knocker, um, which is not going to be available for life, of course, unless he chooses that summoner spell, which we imagine that he will a little bit later on. But you, you're not going to get many uses out of that Flash. Um, so we'll see if the lack of Flash punishes him as the game progresses. In the other lanes, Rascal has developed a slight CS lead over Whippo early on. Of course, Renekton's 1v1 power, very well known. Shouldn't be able to kill the Orn in the lane, but can definitely harass him out, force him back. And you see Whippo's actually got himself a Reju bead alongside his dormant shield, just to keep himself that little bit more healthy. He's gone back, he's going to construct an item, and it's just a Ruby Crystal for now. Look at self-made in the bot lane. So, life is still only level 2. He's hovering around, self-made spots him, and he has no flash. But life should have his E, but Smokestream's gonna stop him, uses the grand entrance to get out of it, and they're gonna chase him down. Life flashed on by self-made. Ruler's the next target, has to jump underneath the they turret, but no this. one has taken tower aggro yet. 
Selfmade looking to take it first. The end of the line comes out. One more auto is enough, and Selfmade gets it. 3 nil and a 1,500 gold lead to Fnatic. And Genji's bot lane is just crumbling right now. And it's all because of this summoner spell choice. What was supposed to be about aggression, finding early skirmishes. Oh, Fnatic's going to go for another dive. Ula gets Zenith bladed. The sun coming out. Here's the TP from Genji, though. And Fnatic maybe have overstepped. Selfmade gets another kill. BDD coming in. Another TP from Rascal. Hitasang and Selfmade need to try and get out of this, but they do not have the summoners. Two kills back over to Genji. So Genji are finally able to respond, but the damage has been done. Medic Reckless is sitting at 1, 0, and 3. Selfmade picked up two kills off the back of that as well. And Rascal invested all of his summoner spells. So, yes, while Fnatic on paper looked like that they overextended, they ended up losing two members. Let's look in, in the context of what they gained. Three kills. Nemesis gets a really good back off because he can push that wave in, reset, grab himself the tier. Same for Bwipo, which means that both Fnatic soul laners are now going to have both their teleports up. Rascal's not going to have Flash, as we mentioned before, which means it can be punished, which means that a bot lane dive is very realistic once again because the moment Rascal shows up top, Whipple's going to hit level 6 foot, potentially level 6 foot, because yeah. uh, Rascal may have gotten a lot of XP from the bot side of the map, of course. But look at that CS differential in the mid lane now. What was a huge pressure point for BDD has now swung heavily in the favor of Nemesis. And like, so Fnatic has just gained so much off the back of that bot lane investment. And also, they burnt Ruler's Flash. And now we see Hillisang has his Flash up, Reckless has his Flash up. The Rakan can give that Ezreal a little bit extra safety. You've got the Arcane Shift. You can use the Rakan as sort of a body block for the Leona but it's very difficult to escape this bot lane if they decide to kill you. Flash shield of De uh, Daybreak, flash stun from the Leona. It's going to lock that Ezreal up for long enough for a last embrace to then connect. And even if you jump away, you're going to be rooted to the spot. So, of course, this is going to result. Oh, here he goes. Goes in, shield of Daybreak used. Ruler's already popped the arcane shift. There's a lot of minions here that Fnatic are fighting into, self-made on his way. But that is just a taste of what can happen to Ruler. If he had an arcane shift quickly enough, he would have been locked up in, in, the, in the spot. Wow. Okay, so... A lot has obviously happened, but Genji recognizes that the bot side of the map does not belong to them. Uh, ooh, I like this response from Rule and Life, pivoting around, seeing if that uh, Infernal Drake has been started, but now Whipple as it is at risk of being died. TP comes through from Nemesis. Nemesis will rejoin this, just wants to give that protection. Genji now able to get that teleport out. Actually didn't invest too much because BDD had pushed up the mid lane and Clid was on the top side of the map anyway. Hillisang has his eyes on life, but as you rightly said, this is really good for Gen G because they do get that TP out. He doesn't quite connect from Hillisang, and Fnatic trying to invest in the bot side of the map right now. Going to push this wave back out so that they can look to steal. They're actually just going to go for the blue buff rather than the Drake. They recognize that the top side of the map does not belong to them, so they're currently splitting the map. Whippo forced to play on the weak side. But notice that. Nemesis for the time being is actually staying top lane. He didn't want to reset yet. He didn't have the gold to spend on anything. So they're just going to keep him in the top lane for the time being. Rascal has no flash. Maybe he's just not afraid of getting dived for the time being. As now the rest of Genji posturing around that Drake. Part of that as well is the range into Wait, Rascal. He can kill definitely have Nemesis has the shockwave here. Could kill Rascal. Rascal with no flash. There's the shockwave. Rascal, cold the meat. Just about able to survive for the moment. But Nemesis still has the flash. Dominus is popped. Nemesis trying to turn it around, Rascal going in with the slice and dice to flash away. Rascal once again uses that Q to gain some health back and is able to survive. Wow, okay, so I think Nemesis, if he had a little bit more mana there, really could have gotten that solo kill, but a lot invested. Now here comes a TP from Orn. Life still only level three, no flash. Flash shield at Daybreak, and that's the stun on Ruler. He hasn't got a summoner to get away, and he is locked up underneath the tower. And this was the TP play we were talking about. Whippo has that advantage, and I think the main reason why they kept Nemesis top was so that they could look for this play. Good stuff from Fnatic to find another kill, extending their gold into 2k. But I want to draw your attention to the minimap very quickly. Look at all this vision that has been invested from Gen G. They have so many control wards just littered around the entrances of Fnatic's jungle. Because while Fnatic have been trying to respond to some of this pressure that Gendry have been creating, uh, they have not been clearing out their side of the map. So Gen G actually have a lot of information and they know what Fnatic is up to. So even though they find themselves at a deficit, they still have answers, they still have ways to bounce back in this game. It's gonna be close flash, smite from Clid to secure it. Selfmade tries to turn it back around, the smoke screen used. Clid's gonna try and jump with the wall, but can't get there in time. Selfmade goes, well, you can have the Herald, but I'll take your life. Uh, ah. We'll see if that was worth it for Clid. Uh, obviously, very debatable, the value of this Rift Herald. Rascal now could be in trouble. 
Elisang on his way up here as well. Surfman's going to chase him down. Nemesis has moved his way towards this top lane. And Rascal's forced underneath the tower. Now the flash is about 15 seconds away. Hillisang hex flashes in. And there's the TP burnt from life. The Rakan's going to join the fray. And will be able to protect his Renekton for the moment. But actually, Rascal going back here. Clitter's on his way. Hillisang stepping, setting up for the sun. Rascal almost has the Dominus, but he just doesn't have it in time. And now life's the next target. He doesn't have flash, but Clid should be in range for him to battle dance away. I am confused as to what is happening, Medic. There is a lot of action all across the map, but it is Fnatic that is consistently coming out ahead. So many uses of teleports, and it's just... What happened in the bot lane was just so unorthodox, you know? The fact that there was no flash on life, the fact that Fnatic read it and punished it so effectively, then continued to punish it, has kind of resulted in these weird lane setups where Genji have been trying to force plays onto Fnatic. They're then using teleports to counter the plays from Genji while also being proactive with their own use of teleports. But regardless, what we can say for sure is that Genji is continuing to fall behind. Yeah. They definitely are. They definitely are right now. And I do wonder if Clid hadn't secured that Rift Herald. That's a tower top lane, right? Because you see Rascal dying. So it was probably worth Clid flashing in and getting onto that Rift Herald to make sure he could secure it. Now he is down towards the bottom side of the map, playing around this dragon in the bot lane. There's about a 20 CS lead for Reckless. He's already got a Mana Mune stacking up. Clint has no flash, but the Zenith Blade goes wide, and Hillisang is yet to hit six. Self-made though, he's going to proc the red buff slow, and there's the stun, and Clint is done for. Fnatic get their eighth kill of the game. Betty, we're going at a killer minute. We certainly are, Medic, and now this is going to be the Infernal Drake for Fnatic. A big punish there onto Clint as well, and the thing that I wanted to highlight before that even happened was when we thought about how this early game was going to look, right? Genji wanted to play through the top side of the map. BDD on this Azir should be able to gain easy priority against an Orianna, which means that you can shove, look for dive top. We actually saw that when the teleport yep. came through from Nemesis. But because of all the early action, Roscoe's at 77 CS. He's behind his niddling. He is currently sitting at level 8. Like, this Renekton is under-leveled. He doesn't have any items completed yet. And relatively speaking, Whippo's in a similar position, but he doesn't care. He's on, right? <laughs> His only purpose is to just be a frontline, be a tank, and use an ultimate. So in terms of everything that's been happening on the top side, Genji have not been able to utilize this Nidalee plus Renekton combo. Now Rascal's going to take a tower hit. Whippo, I thought he may have even gone all in there, but he doesn't have the mana. And now we'll get to see Genji utilize that Rift Hole. They will get a little bit of gold back into the pocket of BDD, but Fnatic, they're sitting very comfortable in this early game. Yeah, about a 3,000 gold lead. BDD is given over all of those plates in the mid lane, though I believe it was two that fell for him. So that's an extra 320 gold into his back pocket. And I like the idea of feeding some of that gold onto your Azir. He is your late game insurance to a degree. So having him have extra items is very powerful. Nemesis with the Shockwave as BDD shuffled him back. Selfmade's going to try and dive in here. Clint is almost just deleted. Selfmade trying to get those autos in, but BDD is standing in the way. Here's the Dawning Shadow to help out Selfmade. BDD forced back underneath this tower. The end of the line doesn't connect. And life is there in time to help out his mid. So Genji are finally able to find a skirmish that goes in their favor. Good use of the ultimate from BDD to be able to shut down Nemesis with the help of Clint. Now, Genji continuing on the offensive. Double TP. I love this proactivity from Genji. They are not willing to sit on their laurels and let Fnatic scale up. And here is the damage, and there is the burst kill. Reckless already down. Hitasang now underneath the tower. Isn't going to survive for long. Rascal can tank this for days, and it's a double for BDD. Excellent commitment from Genji. They're finally getting back onto the board. You can see some of the frustration on Reckless's face. He thought that with so much invested in the mid lane, he would have time to pressure on the bot plates, but he gets punished. All in comes from BDD. Spear, I don't think actually... Oh, it does quite connect on to Nemesis there. And Selfmade doing what he can, but he doesn't have the ultimate available. And then here comes the double teleport. Hillisang doesn't have flash. Oh, wow. Rascal even uses Hillisang to get closer yeah. to Reckless so that he can then flash on top of him, lock him down. And then BDD and the squad can help secure another kill. So that's three quick kills going to the back pocket of Gen G, and they're rapidly closing that gold gap. So this early game has been action-packed, Medic. And we're going to only get more fights as dragons start to respawn. 15 kills in 13 minutes. Self-made 5-2-2 two two with a serrated Dirk and a Corefields Warhammer in his inventory. Wonder where he's going first. You can see the Seraph stacking up the Nemesis. On the other side, BDD on his way to a Nash's Tooth. No Ludens Azir here for the Gen G mid laner. The only real place that Gen G are miles behind as Wippo clears out the top wave. They're just looking for turret plates here. Is Ruler. Uh, Ruler has his Mana Mune stacking up, but he's at 75 CS. 
44 CS behind Reckless right now, who is on his way to a black cleaver. There's still three players from Gen G here in the top lane, but Whippo, like, as soon as the wave was cleared, he knew he was pretty safe. And meanwhile, Reckless is getting some turret damage in the bottom lane. Nemesis is getting some turret, down, uh, turret damage in the mid lane. I think this is the best thing that Genji can really do at this point. Usually when your bot lane is at such a deficit, you try to swap them out of the lane. Arguably, they could have considered doing it a little bit earlier, but either way, Ruler is now in a position where he can get a little bit of free farm, a little bit of solo experience, and a little bit of uh, a break, to say the least, because of the amount of pressure that's been put on him. Self-made showcasing some of the power of this Lethality Graves. Very little armor on the enemy team right now, and Hillisang looking for Rascal. Don't overcommit, Hillisang. So this is something Hillisang does all the time, which is like, he doesn't let you back. Yep. It's just like, hey, I'm just going to put my face in here, make sure that you don't back. Sometimes he overcommits, as you say, but there he was just making sure that Rascal had to waste a couple of extra seconds. Mid lane tower goes down. Now Genji can look for a potential dive in the top lane. Of course, no wave is stacked. Whippo should really consider resetting here, though. That's a lot of damage, and Life is going to spot him out. Life pops the quickness, and Whippo forced underneath the tower. Nemesis is going to TP in. Whippo knocked up, taken out by Clint. Dawning Shadow too late. Nemesis looks for the shockwave. Clint flashes it. But here comes BDD from the side as well as Selfmate tries to join the fray. Gen G, they've closed this gold, ga gold gap, Betty. 1,400 between these two teams now. Yeah, I like what I'm seeing from Gen G. Like, they're not slowing down, and they punished Whippo there for overstaying in the top side of the map. After Gen G got pushed in mid, they rotated up through the top side jungle and immediately collapsed onto Whippo. They didn't need Flash on Life to secure that pick, but they will not be able to convert into a Rift Held. Instead, they're going to keep Rascal pushing in the bot lane. He does not have TP, and I think that Gen G are going to have to give this objective up, given that Fnatic now have the numbers advantage. Rift Held secured there by Selfmade. Yumu's Ghostblade was well, actually taken by Hillisang, but Yumu's Ghostblade is the build here for Selfmade. I like having the Black Cleaver on Reckless because of how quickly you can stack it on a center. Your auto attack actually puts two procs of it on, so auto Q auto gives you the full six stack and not taking it on Selfmade because he needs that extra lethality, that extra burst damage to try and work his way through these squishy Gen G players. Whew. Right. Let's take a quick breather, though, Manny. Okay. This has been a great game. It's been so much Honestly, fun to it's watch. It's been the, like there have been so many small things from both sides where the opposition has been great at punishing. Yep. And I think that's what I've enjoyed so much. It's constantly been a punish game. Who's making those little mistakes that the enemy team can then find an opportunity to get that advantage on? You can see like a lot of the outer towers are now falling. The outer tower in the bot lane and the top lane for Fnatic are likely going to fall soon. And we're kind of reaching those first item breakpoints. You can see that while the total gold is in favor of Fnatic, I still think that this game could still be very close, especially when we look at those mid-game fights. Remember, what we talked about at length, Medic, was how these fights should be played. We want to see patience from Gen G, but we haven't seen that this game as they're looking to dive with once again. Dominus propped, Call of the Forge God being used as well. The battle dance going to do a lot of work here as life gets the kill. And Ribbo was just locked up in place for such a long time. Yeah, again, this is another one of those small mistakes. And it feels like over the last five minutes, it's constantly been Gen G. Remember, kill score was seven to two. Yep. Now it's nine to eight. So huge props to Gen G finding these opportunities and getting these punishes multiple times. And twice now, they've found Whippo effectively overextended because he doesn't have the support from his team. Rascal has just been tanking up these turrets and BDD has been quietly picking up kills. 2-0 and 3, the completed Nash's tooth now on the Azir. He's only going to get stronger as the game progresses. And Genji still in a comfortable position even though they're at a deficit. It's just so much fun to watch. It's like two boxes in the ring just exchanging mm -hmm. blows yes, for and sure. looking for a little weakness in the armor of their opponents. Fnatic still just that little bit ahead, but we have seen Gen G so willing to pull the trigger on a double TP to just dive into a lane. And Whippo, for the last two times, has just been caught out by himself in a sideline. Yes, he certainly has been. Now, oh, BDD, good awareness from him, but this is a long lane. Let's see if he can get away. So no call to the Forge God. Forces the TP out, though, so. I imagine this is what Selfmade expected. BDD recognizes he's overextended and ends up getting punished by Selfmade there. And I was just about to comment on the fact that Jinji do have two TPs available, but that is going to be one that's gone, which means the TPs for both top laners are going to be up and ready to go. Two and a half minutes until the next Drake. I expect a fight to happen. Um, the question is who will be able to come out on top? Because the biggest problem for Jinji is that while they are at a deficit and while they wouldn't be too concerned about it, Ezreal. 
He is currently very far behind in terms of his itemization. He was shut down very hard in the early game, and there's very little that Ruler could do about it. And now the action doesn't slow down as Whippo is looking for a play. Flash Zenith played there from Hillisang missed, but there's the knock up into the Solar Flare, into the Shockwave, into a very dead Croc. Yep, that's exactly how you can lock down the Alligator in the bottom lane. Wow, okay, so that was a good utilization of the TP to find a pick. Fnatic, not really going to convert this into a huge amount outside of a bit of deep vision. Nemesis has to be careful he doesn't overextend because a lot of Genji members are hovering around. But the main point of the play is, too, that Genji can't really get anything on the back side. There's nothing for them to play for in the top side of the map. Let's see if Genji is looking to make a TP play. Renekton has the teleport. Life is on the way. He does have wards. He's got the quickness as well. Teleport available in two seconds here for Rascal. Nemesis, you, like this tower is so low, life can just distract you while it goes down. And Nemesis, you have to back away from it. Self made and Hillisang are on their way. But Genji, I think they're very willing to take this fight. So, what we're going to see. Whippo, going to push in top lane, start rotating down to join the rest of his team. Because he doesn't have the TP and the Drake is spawning in a minute, Rascal can actually sit up in the top side of the map. Notice as well, as I bring up the minimap, a lot of deep vision has been invested from Gen.G. They right now have control, which means that Mark is going to look to reset, restock on his vision, so that they can then come back into the river and contest Fnatic. Fnatic is the one that has to enter the Fog of War. Even though they do have a bit of vision in the river right now, there are a lot of potential flanking TP wards that Gen.G has have to be able to contest Fnatic. So they need to clear this vision out, gain access into the river, and then be first on the objective. Then they can look for a good fight against Gen G. Otherwise, this could be a very dangerous situation for them, given that Gen G have that teleport advantage. You said it in Pick and Bam, Betty. Even though Fnatic have an easy to execute team fight composition, that all their ultimates work in synergy, if you do not get onto the Ezreal or the Azir, or if they, if Gen.G disengage well, Gen.G can take these fights. Even an Ezreal who is behind, he's got a fully stacked Mirror Mana, he's got a Sheen. If those Mystic shots hit, you're not the tankiest of teams on Fnatic. I mean, that's very true, Medic. I think that uh, there is a world where these team fights could be very close. Okay, it's the Ezreal TP. I got very confused for a second there. My apologies. Um, what I find fascinating is that Selfmade went and stole Red Buff <laughs> in the amount of time that it took them to actually enter and set up this Drake. Because Rascals now push this wave all the way underneath the tower. That's a lot of farm that's being lost. Genji giving this one up. Okay, it's, only, it's only second dragon. I mean, it's not unreasonable to uh, to concede this one for now. They're just going to be happy with the fact that a lot of farm was lost. But, oh, life and BDD, they could be in danger right now. Okay, the positioning of cleared actually stops Hillisang and Selfmade from getting the flank and collapse around on the bot lane. Now Nemesis is going to move up towards the top. I'm talking a lot and I'm talking fast, mainly because there's a lot of things happening on it's the map right now. a lot of right moving now. pieces. Yeah. yeah. I totally agree so with I, you. So I, I want to try and get ahead and kind of outline what both these teams are looking at. And I was kind of looking at a position where Genji would look for a fight, but they decided that it's not worth it right now. They want to wait a little bit longer. They... I'm surprised that they're not building tankier on Rascal. He's still going for more of a damage build. And when playing up against the Vaughn, I suppose I get it. But Whippo is going to be getting close now. I believe it's level 14 where he can start sharing those ornaments. Uh, and when looking across the board, you can upgrade the Yomu's Ghost Blade. You can upgrade the Black Cleaver on Reckless as well. And I imagine the Nemesis is going to start working towards that Death Cap very soon. So Fnatic is only going to get stronger in terms of itemization. And Ruler, now that he's hit two items, that's why I thought that they might fight. Because yeah. he's, he's at a point where he could contest. But Genji for now, they're playing it safe. They're playing it calm. So I think that we're going to see a little bit more farming for a little while. And the only thing I'm disappointed by is that we didn't see Genji utilize the TP advantage that they had with Rascal. Whippo's TP is now about to come back up, which means that both top laners are going to be able to match each other once again. Uh, and that was kind of, I think, a, a bit of a missed window, especially with the amount of deep flanking wards that Genji had, where they could have looked for a collapse on that. And Fnatic, after the 22-minute mark, are setting up around this Baron. We have seen them sneak one away before. I remember they traded it for a Dragon against TSM. They often like to try and get this vision control and then see perhaps if the enemy team face checks into you. Zenith Blade just goes wide on cleared. Life actually has a really good flank position here as Hillisang and Reckless maybe have overstepped. Selfmade coming in from the bottom side of the fight. There's the call of the Forge God, only hits onto Life, but he can dodge back. Not if he's knocked up. Whippo takes the kill. Life is down. Wow. Uh, he does have the cleanse, wasn't able to get out of that one though. And good chain CC coming out from Fnatic. They're going to lose the bot lane tower. And this was just Fnatic controlling the topside jungle to look for a pick. They ended up finding it onto life. And 
now they're going to look for that top tier two. I think they're overextending if they do commit this many members, though, because you can see BDD hovering around the mid lane. Rascal looking in the jungle. self -made could be in danger. He's going to slide his way out of that one. Level 13 on the Graves now. Both junglers going toe-to-toe -to -toe in terms of levels and itemization. One thing I did like about that play from Fnatic is Wibbo's TP is now back up. So having him with the team in case a fight did go on, and because Rascal hadn't quite pushed into the tier two in the bottom lane, allowed them that opportunity to find a catch because he is their primary engage tool. The Call of the Forge got into him diving forward will be the way that Fnatic gets most of these fights started. But let's have a look at where we are in terms of itemization here, Vedius. Nash's Toots Void Dive complete on BDD. Seraphs and the Leandries finished on Nemesis. AD Carry Wise is a Trinity Force for Ruler. Deciding against the Iceborne as Whippo fights him in the bottom lane. The TP comes in from Nemesis. Rascal is just going to be able to slice and dice away, and Nemesis is on the chase looking for that shockwave. Rascal still has Flash and will use it to get away from the Ball of Death. And now Hillisang and Reckless are on a flank position, but Ruler has spotted them out. Okay, so a uh, couple things invested there. The flash was lost from Rascal. Honestly, that was an overextension from Whippo that Genji once again tried to punish. We already talked about it, Medic, but I legitimately think this cast has literally just been, oh, you men of Slate, we punish. You yep. men of Slate, we, we punish. And it's just every time you slightly overstep, uh, you're gonna get taken advantage of. And I think that it has been Genji largely punishing some of the big mistakes that we've seen from Fnatic, but then Fnatic is very quick in how they respond. And I think that they've done a great job of punishing life pretty consistently throughout this game. And we'll see if they're able to convert it into anything else. No flash on Rascal means that it's harder for him to now threaten the backline on the Renekton, but I think it was always gonna be difficult for him to do that anyway in this game. Meanwhile, Hillisang taking a lot of damage here in the mid lane as Fnatic look to push out these waves. Once again, gain control over the top side of the jungle, which is a little confusing when the Drake is spawning in 45 seconds. Deciding not to go for the Mountain Dragon right oh. now. I think so. The goal from Selfmade is once again to try and steal the, the red buff away. But I think they already have good enough vision when we look at the bot side of the map to be able to gain what they need, right? So they've got these two wards. They also have a wave that they can just easily push into the bot side. And they also have control over the river here. So Fnatic have good enough vision towards the bot side of the map that they could be a little cheeky. They could yeah. look and see if they could challenge anything. They garnered a lot of information. All of Jinji's in the top side of the jungle, which means that it's much easier for us to actually just know that we can keep this vision. And if we then look at the inventory once again, you'll notice wards are restocked. Control wards are starting to brim the inventories of Fnatic. And I imagine that Nemesis is getting closer and closer to that death cap as well. As Reckless gets himself get an Obsidian Cleaver. We have a Yumu's Wraith Blade and an Obsidian Cleaver as Genji are on the wrong side of the map to contest this dragon. It's only third, it's only sole point, but a Mountain Dragon with an Orn is a very wow. scary prospect. Fnatic actually getting control of the mid lane here as well, but Genji are looking for flank. Life doesn't have Flash, but has the Exhaust, has the Cleanse. Rascal coming in from the top has already popped that Dominus and then straight into the face of self-made. Hitlersang trading here and the TP comes in from the Orn as he tries to dive onto the back line. Call of the Forge God comes down, there's the quickness. Call of the Forge God goes the wrong way, but the Dawning Shadow keeps Whipper alive. And there's the knock-up and there's a double and there's one more. Ruler falls, BDD shuffles in, but the Emperor can do nothing in the face of Fnatic. Four quick kills to Fnatic. That was unbelievable. Fnatic come out ahead, they're looking for the final kill. Reckless chases him down, the last embrace finds its mark. The final auto is enough. Fnatic find an ace at 27 minutes and they're looking for the base. Look at the death timers right now, Medic. Fnatic may be looking for the game. They have a stacked wave in mid. They're looking to knock down the inhibitor. All five members alive. I think that could be it. In a game that has been back and forth, Fnatic find the mistake from Genji. They're on the Nexus Towers. It's only life alive to try and spend. The exhaust goes down onto Reckless, but life is no longer. Nemesis takes him down. The Nexus Towers fall. And Fnatic bounce back after a disappointing performance against LGT to topple the undefeated Genji. What a crazy game. The fact that the game just ended there off the back of one huge team fight was crazy. I thought Fnatic was the one making the mistake. They had three members mid while two were on Drake. Like, they were going to get collapsed on. You could see the collapse coming from a mile away. The double TPs, Renekton sitting over the wall. Like, I thought that was it. I thought they were going to lose a Baron right there. But then the TP coming in from Buipo, he was like, not today. We saw the Wombo combo on Leona, Oriana. Two members of Genji just get wiped off the face of the map. And just like that, Fnatic end the game. What a crazy back and forth. There was such a game plan from Fnatic from the early game. Shut down Ruler, shut down Ruler. And they managed to do it, but then Genji were not willing to go down without a fight. They kept hitting those punches. They kept finding those flank TPs. 
And honestly, like, this was just such a fun game to watch. Like, there were some mistakes, but the ability of teams to say, you've stepped a percentage over where you should be, we're going to collapse, we're going to dive in, was just incredible. And how much more interesting does this does this make the group? Yep. You've got two teams at 2-1, and one, you've got LGD at 1-1, one and one, and TSM at 0-2. So if TSM are able to take down LGD in the next game, we've got just, it's so close, it's one win between all the teams. But if TSM don't, the, this, the group suddenly becomes significantly harder. Yeah. So it's going to be an interesting one.